continue on section 20.4 now we are on the topic of the free transform of a product so this uh, result actually can be obtained from the direct the analogous analogy between free transform and inverse free transform because uh, when we take the free transform of a convolution we get the product of free transform of the two function which is uh, in equation 20 point 70 right down uh, so 20 point 70 when we take the free transform of the convolution of f little f and g what we get is the product of the free transform f capital f in terms of the free transform of g capital g okay so that's what we got last time and this uh, supposedly will uh, but direct symmetry between free transform and inverse free transform you should expect that the particle f and g free transform should give you a convolution between capital f and capital uh, capital G. So that should be expected, but um, we can actually do a direct verification of this by uh, the definition of free transform because uh, by free transform definition f and g is equals to one over square root of two pi integrating over d over x and then f x times g x then e to the i x t okay so t is the real variable which is usually we'll call it k but in, in this section and in this textbook textbook call it t so but uh, it doesn't matter so what uh, you can do now is um, express this little f and little g into inverse free transform. So when you do that, uh, h1 ha has a factor of one over square of two pi. So altogether, you have um, one over two pi to the three half, you have dx. And for little f, you're integrating over like dt pi and capital F t pi and e to the minus i x t pi and for little g you have integral dt double pi and capital G t double pi and e to the minus i x t double pi and the original ex exponent e to the i x t. Okay. Now the all the integration over x now involve only all these three exponential function, and all of them has uh, in, in the argument has the x x factor. So you can pull out the x factor, and this integration will give you a delta function actually two pi times. Uh, the delta function of the argument that multiplied by the x factor. So then uh, that uh, will give you, give you back one of a square of two pi. So you have dt pi, t pi. So all the exponential functions are gone. You have dt double pi, g, t double pi and what is left is a delta function t minus t pi minus t double pi okay and then now you can evaluate one of these integrals so you can evaluate t double pi and then substitute t double pi equals t minus t pi so this is uh, equals to one over square of two pi integrating dt pi f t 
pi and t, t minus t pi, which is just a convolution, which is this one, this one, it's just exactly this one, we can go back to here. Okay, so we show that uh, this is the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform of f times g will give you the convolution which is uh, defined in this form, just as the original de definition of a convolution. Okay, so that's uh, give you a, a straightforward formula. And then it turns out uh, in the later part of this topic, there's actually another form to express this uh, free transform of the product uh, of the two function. And in this form, somewhat different form, it actually assumed that F has a Taylor expansion. And then uh, that uh, multiply by G and do the free transform of this product. And it actually, uh, because you are doing Taylor expansion, F will be involving in the power series of X, X to the power N. So the first uh, formula you, you use is to X to the power N times G and take the Fourier transform. So that would be uh, listed in uh, the textbook before we do that. But uh, actually, we the that we saw actually can again obtained by uh, symmetry between Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform because uh, in section 20.3 we already have a uh, result 20.56. So 20.56. So that uh, the free transform of ddt to the n, so n derivative of a function t f little f, the free transform is equals to minus i omega times n, and the uh, free transform f so f omega okay so and in this the previous section 20.3 uh, actually using t as the physical domain and omega is the Fourier domain so but uh, in this section actually using t as the variable for the Fourier domain actually the notation is not very consistent but uh, it actually doesn't matter but uh, using this you can uh, actually get um, directly, suppose you get the result that we want, uh, so for the free transform x to the power n times g x to the free transform will give you uh, y minus n d dt to the power n gt, right? And this is minus n. Okay, but uh, we actually can do it another way. Again, the, by direct um, definition of the free transform, say uh, x power n times g free transform, so equals to one over square of two pi integration or integrating over x, and then your x to the n times g x and e to the i x t. Okay, we can start with this definition, but then this x to the power n can be obtained by taking the derivative of this exponential function with respect to t. So that will give you, each time you will pull over i x, so you need to, uh, right, like, x and multiply the minus i because that will cancel the i and then d d t to n power operator e to the i x t and that multiplied by g x okay so and this uh, 
this operator minus i d d t the n can be pulled out from the integral and the rest of the integration becomes just uh, Fourier transform or little g which is capital G so what is left is uh, minus i d d t to the power n g t which is uh, the result we want which is exactly this result okay now we can then use this to do the product of f and g we trans assuming that uh, f has a Taylor series expansion to so sum over n from zero to infinity one over n factorial and then uh, f to the n derivative evaluate uh, x equals zero and now the x to the n multiplied by g and Fourier transform. Okay, and this we already have that, so we can just write use that explicitly. And, and factorial f n zero minus i d d t n gt all right so now this is a like this a Fourier series except that this is power n is an operator but you can formally write like um, f and evaluate at uh, x equals to minus i d d t and operate on gt now this function f becomes an operator because uh, the argument becomes uh, and a differential operator. So that, uh, so this is equation 20.94. All right, so that uh, gives you another expression of the Fourier transform of the, the power that, uh, between two function f and g. Okay, so now you have one formula, this formula, which is a convolution given by here. The other one is this one. So this one is, this two expression looks very different, but actually uh, you can show from one to the other and we can do that. So because we can uh, start with this one and see if we can get this expression. So now F and G by this uh, convolution. What we'll first do is uh, do a, a Taylor expansion of this capital G function, okay? And then do a Fourier transform of this. Uh, this F is a Fourier transform of the little f, we'll do that. For this one, you get, uh, pull out uh, one of the two square of two pi, so all together you have, uh, uh, one over two pi, okay, so you have one over two pi in green, dt pi, and integrate dx, fx. This is a Fourier transform, so your i, x, t pi, will give you this, will give you a capital F, and this, capital G becomes a Taylor expansion, sum of n from zero to infinity, one of n factorial. Now this one, uh, this one is uh, the derivative of d d t n g. Now expanding about t, so this is where a t, and then minus t pi to the n factor n power. Okay, so now what you can do is uh, evaluate as this t t n. Okay, so we also can um, pull the summation out. N factorial, and now write the dx out. 
of x and integrate uh, dt pi and this one this minus t pi n you can get again from the derivative of uh, this exponential function which uh, require you to get the uh, uh, say this will give you a because you need to get the minus sign, you will get the i d dx n. Okay, and that pull our i x i times i is minus, so you have minus t to the n power. Okay, and that operate on e to the i x t pi. And the rest is uh, d d t to the n power of g t. Okay. Now this i d d x the n power doesn't involve d t pi, so you can pull that out of the integral. And the integration over d t pi is just two pi times delta function. So this is sum of n from zero to infinity. One of n factorial dx f x. Okay, and then you have i d dx n and delta x and e d t n g t. Okay, now this you have a delta function in the x x integration, you can evaluate that by the formula of delta function or by integration by part, which is exactly the same. So each time you do the integration by part, you introduce a negative sign, so you have a negative i, n power, and then you operate, the derivative operate on f becomes, and then evaluate x equals zero by the depth delta function. So. This uh, is a uh, sum from n from zero to infinity, one over n factorial, so n derivative of f evaluate x equals zero, and you have minus i d d t power n operate on g t. Okay, now again. Uh, this summation looks like a um, tail ex expansion, except uh, you have this operator instead of a, a variable, but then formally you can write like f evaluate minus i d d t and operate on g t. All right, so we start from the convolution expression of the transformation between two products and then show that uh, assuming Taylor expansion exists, you can show that it get to the other form of the free transform. Say f, the little f function evaluate at minus i d d t and operate that free transform of the g function capital G. Okay, so that's uh, another way to look at that so uh, so i think uh, the next topic is um, basically very simple application of this uh, free transform of the product because uh, this is applied in schrodinger equation of um, of um, one dimensional schrodinger equation so like uh, in 20 point 90, 95, so 20 point 95, you have the usual Schrodinger equation, minus one over two M, this is one D, so you have D, D, X, D squared, D, X squared, and operate on a wave function psi X, and press V X times psi X, okay, equals to 
in which eigenfunction eigenvalue in terms of x. Okay, this one. So now you have a product between v, the potential term, the wave function, v psi. So one way to get uh, use the free transform of the uh, product, you can transform this using the Fourier transform, uh, the, the convolution, the result would be uh, in the equation 2497. Basically, the, this DDX Fourier transform will give you the Fourier transform variable, which is the uh, what we usually call K, but then in quantum mechanics, you can call that P. So that becomes a P squared over 2M. And the free transform, you call it little phi, which depends on P, and then plus the convolution and multiply this uh, V, free transform of V if it exists, P minus P prime, and multiply by this little phi function T prime. P prime and DP prime, okay, equals to E phi P. This is equation 20 for 97. 97. Okay. And so this is, becomes an integral equation. But uh, sometimes this integral can be done. So I think the next example will do something like that. But then uh, another way to write it, they're uh, using this uh, this kind of a uh, notation. If V is uh, can be uh, it's a simple function, you can substitute uh, minus I D D T in, in this case. Uh, and actually, because of uh, different convention becomes I D D P. So another way to write this is uh, P squared over two M um, into five P plus uh, this potential but evaluate at uh, I D D P D D P and operate on the little phi function equals to E phi P. This is an equation 20 upon 96. 20 upon 96. Okay. And this is 20 upon 95. Okay. So this uh, kind of equivalent form of um, the Schrodinger equation um, which one is easier to solve? Of course, depends on the form of V, and uh, but uh, that uh, at least gives you a choice for a different problems. So I think the next example will show you one example that we can use one of them uh, that uh, to solve um, the Schrodinger equation-like equation. All right, so. Uh, We'll stop here and look at the next example next time.